Well, hello there and welcome to another episode of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants. Now, I've shared before that one of my goals for this podcast is to shine a light on the new and innovative solutions that are becoming available to make managed service providers' lives easier. Well, today I'm speaking to two gentlemen who have a track record of helping MSPs to succeed. Derek Belair and Gavin Garber are the co-founders of Augment, a SaaS security management and software solution. Now, if their names sound familiar to you, it's because prior to founding Augment, Gavin and Derek were the people behind Enable, the company that introduced the first RMM, or Remote Monitoring and Management Solution for IT providers, and promoted the concept of managed services all the way back in the year 2000. Now, Enable was sold to SolarWinds in 2013. Derek has over 20 years experience in the channel in a senior leadership role and has worked with thousands of MSPs across the globe. And Gavin has been a founder of seven successful startups and is responsible for corporate governance, strategy and corporate financing. And industry accolades include Deloitte Canada's Technology Fast 53 years running, Deloitte's Fast 500 for North America, CRM Magazine three time, has three times named Gavin one of North America's top 25 most innovative and influential executives uh, of the year. Phew, I'll take a pause there. These are two men who know managed services inside and out. I'm honored to have them join us today. Derek and Gavin, welcome to Tub Talk. Richard, thank you very much for having us. I'm, it's fantastic. I get to have my morning coffee and be with you and Derek. This is, couldn't be better. <laughs> It's not often I'm out of breath, given the introduction, the amount of accolades you two gentlemen have had. So it is truly an honor to have you here with us today. I guess, uh, Gavin, I'll turn to you first. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in a little town called St. Andrews, New Brunswick, just north of Maine. And uh, on the ocean, we just had 10 centimeters of snow. It's beautiful and sunny. And uh, this is, uh, it's, a, it's a nice spot to be. Yeah, I can well imagine. Derek, where are you joining us from? I'm actually in uh, in Ottawa. So we had 15 centimeters of snow last night. That means Gavin's 10. Not that there's any competition. I'm just saying. And uh, But yeah, we're in our headquarters here in Ottawa and uh, trying to stay warm. I, I will share with our listeners, just before we came on air, I was complaining a little bit to these gentlemen. I was like, oh, here in Newcastle upon time where I am, I said, it's, it's really cold at the moment. And then I realized who I was speaking to, where they are, and hands down, you two win the competition for how cold it is at the moment. So, <laughs> Derek, I will turn to you first. For anybody not familiar with Augment, how do you describe what you do to help MSPs? Yeah, great question, Richard. First of all, thank you so much for having us. Always a pleasure, you know, being able to chat with you and, and your listeners. Um, you know, the easiest way to describe what Augment is all about is, is you know, Gavin and I, built a technology platform dedicated to helping MSPs create SaaS and Microsoft service revenues. So we, you know, from a long time ago, when back in the enable days, we always saw a, a significant shift happening towards cloud and SaaS. And we always felt that it was an area of massive amount of opportunities for MSPs. You know, everybody was moving towards cloud-based applications. And the need to secure these applications was something that was top of mind for, for everybody, from the MSPs to the customers. So our goal was to help the way we did in the enabled days was to help our partners by creating innovative and powerful technology platform and help them be able to drive SaaS and Microsoft service revenue in a very profitable, very easy model. And that's that's what we're dedicating our entire our entire business vision is is really helping MSPs build that security service revenue. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I want to dig more into what Augment does, how it helps MSPs. But before we get there, Gavin, I've got to ask, you know, I, I mentioned you founded a lot of startup businesses. Where did the idea for Augment come from initially? Well, to, to be honest with you, it, it was kind of going to be the next iteration of Enable. So mm -hmm. before we sold Enable, we had uh, investigated, designed, and we were we were going to basically rebuild the platform uh, from scratch and add in SaaS security and SaaS management, and, and of course Microsoft uh, becoming a SaaS application. Um, <clears throat> so it was all that idea about the MSPs. They're managing the network and devices, and that's great. But as IT moves to the cloud, 
then they will also have to start managing and securing cloud services. So um, the idea came from back then, and then the transaction happened, as you mentioned, um, and uh, and Derek and I got together five years later after my non-compete ended. <laughs> and uh, we were we, we, every six months pre-COVID, we used to have these nice dinners with wine and whatnot and get together and catch up. And, and we were talking, we were saying, you know, there are no multi-tenant RMM solutions for SaaS security and SaaS management. Just like, as you said, back in 2000, there was no multi-tenant RMM solutions for devices. So we created that whole category and created managed services. And so here we were, we're saying, well, you know, you look at service now, 6 billion a year in software sales, growing 30% year over year, better cloud flex era. The enterprise have adopted this idea of SaaS security and SaaS management. Um, and small and medium-sized businesses were adopting SaaS at an incredible level. Um, but there was still, the channel did not have a tool to be able to remotely monitor, manage, and secure these applications and the data and the applications. So uh, Derek and I had this chat and we said, yeah, let's let's do this together. And uh, so here we are. I love it. I mean, you, you've clearly got a track record of being visionaries and sort of looking a little bit into the future. You're like the Tony Starks of, uh, <laughs> of the MSP industry, but... Derek, something I'm hearing more and more people speak about now, and it's a, it's an idea or a, a catchphrase that I only came across fairly recently, the concept of shadow IT. Yeah. What is shadow IT and why is it a challenge for MSPs? Well, it's, it's interesting because the concept of shadow IT has been around for a long time. And, and, you know, in the old days when everything was connected to the network and protected by a firewall, shadow IT really spoke to people bringing in devices from home and, and connecting it to the network. Or, you, you know, it conjures up ideas of somebody sneaking in a flash drive in the sole of their shoes to try to connect, yes. you know, illegally to the network. Um, what's happened with the move towards SaaS and cloud, what happened is, is technology, specifically software, became very, very easy to adopt. You know, anybody with, with a browser could log into any application, sign up for anything, and start moving corporate data around. So as we started looking at the security problem or the security opportunity that SaaS presented, you know, we, we were faced with a problem when we talked to MSPs and their customers that they really didn't know what were the applications being used and by whom and what for. And, and when you think of the old RMM days, uh, you know, the first thing we always told partners to do is, you know, you run a network discovery, find out what is connected to the network, what are the devices, you know, have a system of record of what are physically connected and, and being used by the employees. You, you fast forward to today, you know, understanding what applications are being used by your marketing team and, and what tools are being used day to day and where your data is, has become a massive challenge and, and has become a, a real source of security vulnerability. And the way that we see it is, is you as an MSP or you as a customer, if you really do not know without the shadow of a doubt what is being used by your employees and when and how and who are the administrators and where your data is, you know, that is a huge security blind spot. So from our perspective, Shadow IT really talks about the understanding and, and dealing with the fact that the world has changed, people will be using applications and being able to build that system of record, being able to, to tell either your auditors or your security team, these are the approved application and this is who is using which application and how, that is absolutely critical. So that, that shadow IT, IT piece has definitely become much more mainstream and, and has become a, an ever-growing problem. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. The shadow IT has been around for quite some time. I was just recalling, really, when I ran an MSP business, shadow IT for us would have been either, as you say, somebody plugging a USB stick in or somebody loading software from a floppy disk. I'm, yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> or somebody plugging their own modem into a machine and connecting to a service that way. So, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Shadow IT has been around for, for quite some time. But, again, perhaps it's come to the fore again now. On that topic, Gavin, if I was to put you on the spot, how would you describe the category that Augment fits into? Because it's not quite RMM. It is cybersecurity. But how would you describe the category if you were to, to pigeonhole it? It, it? I think the easiest way to think about it is that 
This is RMM for Microsoft and SaaS security management. So this is the whole discovery, monitoring of everything that's being used from an application perspective, whether it's cloud or desktop, um, and then monitoring and managing um, all, all of these security policies and posture in real time. So being able to uh, know across all of your customers is MFA enabled. And if something changes, give me, give me an alert immediately and allow me to remediate it immediately. Um, are my passwords set up properly? All, all of the security policies and postures that your clients should have. And the MSPs have not been able to do that historically because they would have to go tenant by tenant by tenant by tenant by tenant to check it every you know, month if they were lucky or, <laughs> but, but they're too busy and they don't have the manpower to do this. So this, this automates that whole discovery, the configuration, the monitoring, the remediation and the reporting of all of those security policies and posture. Uh, so, so this allows the MSP to really elevate their security practice to where it should be, where their customers actually think it is. Uh, and then, uh, and, and the whole idea is, you know, how do you, it's back to the old days of managed services, a reactive technician can manage about 150 seats, a proactive technician can manage 250 seats, and a managed technician can do about 600 seats. So you, you understand what happens to your profitability in this. So we want to help them get to manage, and then we want to keep evolving that, and how do we get that to 2,000 seats per technician? and really juice the profitability and the security practice of that managed service provider. Yeah. So talking to the point of security, Gavin, with, with the recent challenges, <laughs> taking a deep breath here while we say this one, the recent <laughs> challenges that RMM and PSA vendors have faced in cybersecurity, you much, must have been watching with some degree of interest and maybe even like me with, you know, your hand behind your face looking through your, your <laughs> fingers, especially given, you know, your background in the industry. Uh, and we won't name any names here, you know, uh, but it is tough. And Augment, of course, built from the ground up for the new modern MSP. Uh, perhaps that goes some way to, uh, to, to making things easier for you. But what does cybersecurity mean to Augment today? after your 20 odd years in, in this industry? Well, I, I'm going to have to take my hat off to Derek and the team, to be honest, um, because it was uh, their their vision and their drive to, one, make us a SOC 2 type 2 certified company at a very early stage. So it, it, implementing that discipline um, and having these audits happen to you um, in a very, very meaningful way, not only not forget the cost that's associated with, with it, because that too is significant, but just to, to invest in the, in the people and the processes and the technologies uh, to make sure that your company and your applications and your service delivery models are secure, um, I think is critical. And on, quite honestly, any MSP who uses tools that are not certified, either ISO or SOC 2 or whatever, um, I, I think that's not prudent at all because they're not independently verified if, if security is important to them as a business. So for us, um, and, and under Derek's leadership, everything that we do is uh, security focused. Yeah, makes sense because MSPs have got the keys to the kingdom, essentially, you know, and if uh, um, they get breached, all of their clients get breached as well. So what you've said absolutely makes sense. And I hope this is the new standard of uh, MSPs looking to vendors and saying, hey, you have to have these types of standards in place before we'll do business with you. Well, Richard, I'll, I'll give you another example on that is that in, in the US, uh, <clears throat> MSPs who use our product uh, their customers get up to a 40% discount on cybersecurity insurance. Right. So, so you know, that's that's how important we think it is. It's not just, you know, for us and our products, but how do we help our customers, our MSP partners, deliver advanced security services to their customers where the, the end customer actually gets up to a 40% discount. 
on their cybersecurity insurance because they're more secure as a result of our products. That's fantastic to hear. Derek, I want to pick up on something Gavin said. He mentioned that phrase, multi-factor authentication. (laughs) Now, I think I speak for most MSPs listening to this. We've got a love-hate relationship with that, with MFA, with two-factor authentication. In fact, I usually hear a groan from MSPs because they know it's necessary, but my goodness, it can be laborious to manage is probably the best way of putting it. What are your thoughts on MFA for cybersecurity? How does Augment help from that perspective? Well, Richard, it's funny that you say love, hate, because that's exactly the words I was going to say. Like everybody (laughs) listening to this, we have a love, hate relationship with MFA. Um, I mean, listen, if if, as an MSP, as a customer, if you're going to only choose to do one thing to help protect yourself and and your data and your organization, it's MFA. MFA is, is the number one thing. I think Microsoft says that People, you know, MFA can can prevent 99.9% of the attacks. It's the number one easiest thing for any malicious actor to to penetrate is non-MFA accounts. So, you know, we have a, a love relationship with it because people understand it. The hate part is that MFA is very intrusive. No user gets up and think, oh, great, this application now enforces MFA. Fantastic. <laughs> and it's that extra barrier towards getting you know, to that destination. Um, what you said is very accurate. The problem with MFA today is that you know, it's 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 enforced as an all or nothing, and it, it is very intrusive, um, and it's very difficult to manage and difficult to implement. And and unfortunately, what happens, uh, not in our organization, of course, but I hear of other organization. You know, the executives say, "Listen, you got to turn it off for me. I can't deal with this. It's fine for the employees, but not for me." And then it starts to get turned off, and then next thing you know, that's the account being attacked. Um, you know, we we take MFA. Um, you know, we take a, a very proactive approach to it. Um, when we talk about Microsoft security, MFA is the number one thing that you can do to protect your environment. And, and there are so many um, interesting ways that you can implement MFA in a non-intrusive manner. And that, that really comes down to, you know, what are the policies around MFA? Is MFA on for everybody? Is it on for a certain type of, uh, of accounts uh, that have, you know, enhanced um, uh, admission capabilities within the application? Is it on if you're using a corporate device that is protected, but uh, not if you're using another device? Or potentially it's it's not turned on uh, if you're on the corporate network, but it does get turned on if you're outside the network. All of those nuances is what um, MSPs can really work with their customers to implement meaningful MFA policies that will uh, stick the test of time. Um, and also being able to, to understand not just building MFA policies, implementing it, but monitoring whether or not it gets turned off. Because the MSP goes to great lengths to make the customer's environment secure and protected and implement very meaningful policies like MFA. But the minute that gets turned off, the minute something happens, somebody travels overseas and and can't have MFA turned on, that's when everything starts to fall apart. So the way we say it to MSPs is, is work with your customers to understand the level um, of, of security risk they're willing to, 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 to handle. Build an MFA policy that is enforceable, is meaningful, but will actually work for those customers. But above all, monitor it constantly. Make sure you're always looking after it because it is one of those things that will grow over time. And, and it is a huge source. You know, the, the part that I love about it is as an MSP, it is a huge source of revenue opportunity, both project work for implementing it uh, ongoing reoccurring revenue for monitoring it, but it will be the thing that will protect the customer. And if you do it properly, it, it doesn't have to be something you hate, even though a lot of people do hate it. <laughs> yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And I often talk about MSPs looking for opportunities to lower their cost of support. And of course, that leads to increased revenue. You know, MFA is obviously a really good way of doing this because you've got MFA in place. As you say, it, it, it mitigates a lot of problems. Uh, but the, the the laborious nature of managing it, you know, so I think yeah. Augment, in fact, I spoke to an MSP just last week and mentioned Augment and said that one feature alone was, you know, worth worthy of them taking a look at the product. So, um, right. Gavin, I want to turn to you for a moment. Uh, you know from experience that MSPs tend to be very time poor. That's probably a generous way of of describing the fact that they often are running around chasing their tails. So when a tool like Augment comes up, and there's going to be lots of people listening to this and say, this sounds really interesting to us. We can see how it's going to be valuable to us. 
but where on earth am I going to find the time to deploy, to manage, to use this product to get to, to learn how it works as that? So tell us a little bit more about what does the process look like of deploying Augment? How time consuming will this be for an MSP? Well, Richard, you've actually hit the nail on the head um, <clears throat> because the, the, the platform is broad. And if you tried to eat the whole thing at once, it would be like eating uh, a big cow. <laughs> so let's carve off the, the some nice steaks and uh, and let's do that. So the de the deployment is 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 dead easy. It, it takes minutes per tenant, um, and we're just about to introduce some functionality where it will take seconds per tenant. Um, and and it draws in all the the data for the last 60 days automatically so you can provide audits and reports to the customers on their security policies, their posture, um, detailed reports to show them just how bad their environment is and why they need your premium security services. <laughs> so it's very much a sales tool as well as an auditing, monitoring and reporting solution. Um, so that you can do that for the customer, show them how the environment is. And it, it's actually, you, you don't have to sell, you just say, this is, this is the facts in your environment. And this is what we recommend as a solution to improve your security. Would you like us to proceed or not? So, um, the idea is to take that friction away for, between the, the MSP and the client. So, so the deployment is super fast, super easy. The usability of the product, again, Derek and the team have done an amazing job. The usability, like you can download, get 100 free licenses, uh, download it, set it up, use it, commercial licenses, set it up in a bunch of customers, and, and you're off and running. It, it, it's, it's The whole idea is simplicity, you know, the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Um, and and that's, that's what the channel loves is a product that they can deploy and use right away. And the first thing that I, actually I recommend MSPs that they do because the biggest pain point for almost all MSPs is multi-tenant MFA management mm -hmm. back to that point. So my point to MSPs is look, roll out uh, the secure module and you'll, you'll basically instantly have multi-tenant um, MFA management and reporting and monitoring and remediation across all of your clients. And you'll also have collected all of the security data automatically. And then you can go in and provide them with audit reports to show them just a bit. But you should, back to Derek's point, fix the MFA problem. And you can do that instantly and easily. This is no longer a hard thing to do or a problem. Just do it. Here's the technology. Do it, built-in processes, everything. And then go back with the audit reports and show them all their security policies, where they have weaknesses, and which ones you recommend that we start working on to improve. So it's a it's a very elegant, smooth process to help scale the MSP's service practice, well, in, improve their security practice, scale the technician's capabilities, and then help the customer with their security policies and posture. Yeah, makes sense. And I will reiterate what you said about it being a beautiful, easy to use interface as well. So well done there, Derek and team, because uh, your colleague, George Smith and I, we sat down recently and we did a video demo with a screen share and everything. And uh, yeah, when I said earlier on for listeners, you know, this is one of the new breed of applications that's built for the ground up for the modern MSBs. It really is a beautiful looking interface, you know, it really easy to use. So we'll include in the show notes a link to that video demo so people can see what we're talking about. But Derek, I want to turn to you and 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 maybe, you know, change tact a little bit away from MFA. Just talk to us a little bit more about the SaaS application discovery features in Augment. So in your experience, are MSPs even aware of all the SaaS applications that their clients use? And what about small businesses themselves? The, are the business owners aware of what's going on on their network? Well, it's it's really interesting. You know, I, I treat all of our products like children. And, and while you love them all equally, you always have kind of one that you feel a little favorite. And I love this cover. And I love it because of the conversation that it engages with MSPs and the customers. The way that Augment Discover works is it, it really gives you very, very quickly a view of every application used by your employees, whether they are being used as cloud application or whether they're desktop 
apps like Zoom, even though it's a cloud app, it's used right. uh, locally on the desktop. And uh, and it gives you that that really quick view of what are the application, who's using them, the frequency, um, and it really gives you that that insight. Um, now, I, I love talking about it with MSPs or customers because the reaction is always the same. I always start with a bit of a softball of like, how many apps do you think you're using? Take a guess. And they'll always try to err on, you know, it's always between 40 to 60. They, you know, they feel like they've got a good handle because they know what they're paying for on the corporate credit card. When you do the discovery, the reaction is always the same. First of all, it's always that, well, this can't be right. Obviously, <laughs> don't use this much. This, that's not right. And you immediately get a, who is still using that application? I thought we stopped using it. Or who's using that application? I told people were not to use that. So it, it really brings to, to, to the forefront that, that view that, you know, whether you like it or not, SaaS application is, is a shortcut for a lot of people's business and a lot of people's jobs. Most people don't use uh, SaaS in a, in a, you know, in a, in a negative way or in a malicious way. They're really just trying to make their jobs easier. And the conversation you hear all the time when, you know, uh, either an MSP or a customer engages with the employee and says, why are you using that? It's always some sort of a, well, it takes too long for IT. I've asked IT to give me this app. They didn't give it to me. I can't use that. And I need to use this feature. And, and why, the reason why ultimately I like the Discover data is that it creates a, a very meaningful, very positive conversation with the user of how can we make this better? How can we, one, potentially bring this, this product into the fold? And that means who is the administrator, right? If the, the, the problem with a lot of these SaaS applications, whoever signs up for the trial is by default the administrator. They don't really care they use a corporate credit card or a personal credit card, and they don't really care how you get data into those applications. They don't say, do you have permission? Are you allowed to use this data? Are you taking it from somewhere else? So it, it is truly the wild west of how you can sign up, use application. And what scares a lot of people when it comes to the discovery piece is, you know, is this application a critical part of a process that we use internally in this company? Is this how we do part of payroll? And if that person was to leave with that application, could that process continue? And also, if that person was to leave and we didn't know they're using that application, what happens to the data and what data is in there? And so it creates a, a very meaningful, uh, I would say, proactive security conversation about, you know, we should probably have a list of approved application. We should probably have a way of monitoring that list to see if it grows. We should have a way of dealing with applications that are unknown of, of how are we going to bring it in and what is the process for, for making an application approved. And ultimately, beyond just the data and the discovery of it, it's how do we monitor it moving forward? Because it's great to publish a list of these are the approved apps and this is what you're supposed to use. But if you're not constantly looking at it, it's very difficult to, to have you know, your hands around this security perimeter. In the old days, it was easy, right? If you installed an application on, on your desktop inside the network, I mean, that's where it was contained. But now it is truly remarkable how many applications. And to come back to the original point, we always I always start by asking, you know, how many, how many applications do you think you use? 40 or 50? I'm like, oh, wow, that's great. You know, you seem to have a good handle. It's always 5X. It's always 300 <laughs> to 350. And, and it's the it's the nature of the application that surprises people like Calendly. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize, but yeah, it is free. Yeah, I guess that's right. And some other, you know, e email-based application. Marketing, I would say, are the worst. My background's in marketing and I am the worst. I truly believe that I built Discovery to check myself and my marketing team for how many apps we use because we were notorious with applications. So <laughs> it is just a, a really cool, very interesting uh, and very monetizable uh, set of data. Yeah, it's really interesting. I spoke to an Augment MSP here in the UK just a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about the SaaS discovery, and I was just trying to find out how they used it. And they relayed a story to me how they went to a, a new client and said, uh, just to check, do you use Dropbox? Oh, no, 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 we do not use Dropbox. That's forbidden. Ah, okay. Well, and then they could point out the individual users who were going, and they said, well, we can't understand how this is because we've blocked Dropbox on the network. Yeah, but you've not blocked people from going to the website. And this person was using it this day. And it's yeah. really interesting. And I think um, it, it, it's a real conversation starter and a way for MSPs to demonstrate early on in the relationship, we know more about your network than you could ever 
uh, possibly uh, no without us uh, here. I think that's a, that's a really yeah. uh, sort of powerful statement. So um, to the point of this SaaS sprawl, uh, Gavin, if I turn to you, I think most MSPs are familiar with the scenario. You'll know this yourself. You get a phone call from a client on Monday morning and they say, hey, Gavin, can you set a new user up for us? And you say, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, when are they starting? Oh, they have started. They're sat next to me. <laughs> now, in my day, you would scramble around and you would set up maybe three or four accounts, Active Directory, some of the bits and pieces. Fast forward to the modern day and MSPs have got a setup, thanks to SaaS Sprawl, you know, dozens of different accounts. I guess my question would be, can Augment help with this process? What does it look like in terms of managing the applications? Well, absolutely. So, so onboarding is a great example, and on offboarding is even a right. more security risk uh, scenario um, because all of a sudden, some says, "Oh yeah, somebody just left," <laughs> and they still got access to all of these accounts. And the MSP is usually the last people to know about it. The person, right. yeah, right. So, so weeks and months can go by where people still have access to corporate data. Um, and usually it's not a problem, but actually often it is a problem. And, and so um, automating that onboarding and offboarding is something that Augment does um, in its administration engage module. And the whole idea is uh, we've built in all the workflows, the policies and everything. So you can have a, you can li literally have an administrative level person or a level one technician who can be doing onboarding and offboarding and it takes like two minutes uh, to do somebody. So that whole idea of, of creating, you know, productivity gains and lowering the cost of the service delivery by having more junior people able to do it. And even in our product, we have granular user permissions. So you can have your end customer, they may want to do their own onboarding and offboarding and, um, password management, et cetera. And they can get permissions just for those tasks to do that internally if the MSP would like. And then the MSP can be the level two or level three uh, to support some of those activities. So um, absolutely, the, uh, that, that whole idea of onboarding, offboarding, password management, MFA management, user management, license, all that kind of stuff is, uh, is a key part um for for msps and and you know the the channel is going to evolve yet again and their services are going to evolve yet again and the next phase for msps is to start helping the customers um manage and secure that application layer yeah it makes absolute sense i mentioned earlier that the idea of making a really good first impression uh, with clients, um, you know, from the perspective of highlighting the security of their network. It strikes me, actually, that uh, this is a real opportunity for an MSP to make a great impression to save the client money, you know, to either go in and say, well, did you realize you've got way too many licenses for this application or this person's left or, you know, and, and as I understand it, that could be something they do on a month to month basis, actually highlighting to the client, we have saved you this much money by, you know, saving these licenses. Well, absolutely, Richard. So, you know, you take an example of Adobe or Salesforce or whatnot, and the customer tells you, yeah, you know, here's our stack of approved apps. So you do your audit discovery. You say, great, here, here they are, and here are the users. And you have 20 licenses of Salesforce, but, oh, my goodness, only 10 people are using it, and three people are only logging in once a month. Well, those three people don't need a full license. And why are all these other people not using it? Why are you paying for those licenses? Um, or you've got Salesforce and another sales app running, and you can see exactly who's using what and why are we paying for those two applications if nobody's using this other one? So from a, from a cost perspective, from an employee productivity perspective, you know, if you if you do want to know how much time people are spending on Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, there's that productivity side. Um, but, but I think the most important is, you know, I think every MSP is or should be doing cybersecurity training with their customers. And part of that is what applications are being used and where's the corporate data going. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Derek, we, we've spoken about setting up new users. We've talked about offboarding. There's clear benefits uh, to all of that. But what we haven't spoke about is something I think a huge number of MSPs overlook. 
and that's backing up data. Now, again, if I'm and to act as the old man of the industry here and talk about in my day, you know, we used to have a tape drive and we used to back the server up. Happy days. There maybe would be one or two critical workstations that we was also back up as well. Fast forward to today, there's no way really to do a centralized uh, backup of this data locally with SaaS sprawl, all the different applications. And, you know, we've talked about what happens if somebody leaves, what happens to the data, so on and so forth. What about backing up data from SaaS applications? Is that something that Augment helps with? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say the easiest money an MSB will ever make is selling backup of SaaS applications. It is literally the easiest money you'll make. There's a, there's a great misconception out there that the minute you move towards SaaS, the benefits of SaaS is the fact that the company handles the hosting and the reliability and, and the data protection and backing right. it up. And that at some point, if something was to happen, you can call Salesforce or Microsoft and say, hey, listen, roll back the data a few weeks, a few days, get me my data. I want to get off this application. Potentially, I want to make sure it's protected. That is probably the biggest falsehood of SaaS industry. Yes, right. SaaS applications, you know, really, or, you know, ensure reliability and availability of the application. And yes, they make sure that your data is available to you. But anybody that has read any of the fine prints of any of these applications, data retention and, and the ability to roll back data should something have happened is usually not in their service offering. They will do their best, their best effort. They will make your data available. But should something happen, you're really on your own. So the way that I say, you know, the way that I say to MSP is that if you want to make you know, any money in, in the SaaS industry, you know, use an application like Discover to understand exactly what your customers are using. Have a conversation with the customer about which of these application host data that you would potentially, you know, be in, in, in real either litigious, uh, you know, uh, some scenarios, or, or certainly you would be at a loss for productivity if that data was to leave. And I would say that the easiest thing you can do as an MSP is sell a backup service for those applications. So everybody thinks of backing up Microsoft, obviously. Everybody thinks about Box and Dropbox and those obvious file sharing sites. But people will often forget about things like Salesforce, for example, or other applications like that. Those applications hold a tremendous amount of data. And, and you know, for me personally, as a, as a Salesforce organization here, if that data was to disappear, even for a few hours, we would be at a real loss. So I would say use the Discover data, understand where and what applications are being used, where your critical data is, and then create a plan with the customer to back it up. We offer a backup service. I'll tell you, there are lots of them out there. Just use the backups, back up the data, and monetize it. It is an easy, simple way for MSPs to make money. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And for any MSPs listening to this and saying, as you mentioned there, that they assume that Microsoft, Google, or whatever are looking after the backups, that is true to a degree. But I challenge any MSP to go to Microsoft, go to Google, whoever, mm -hmm. and say, can we restore this email or can we restore this user or we need, whatever it might be at best it takes forever to get to that and at worst it simply doesn't happen and when you've got a client banging on your door and saying we need this data now that is an issue you do not want to face so couldn't agree with you more on that one Derek so awesome. We've spoken about the product quite a lot. If it's okay, guys, I'd love to speak to you about your relationship and your background because I mentioned at the start of the conversation, you know, you guys are legends in this industry. You are uh, architects of the managed service provider space as a whole. So, Gavin, if I can turn to you, first of all, you two, you and Derek have known each other such a long time now. How would you, you know, explain your relationship? How would you describe your relationship with Derek? And pretend he's not here for a minute. Gavin, I've got pictures. I've got pictures on my phone, Gavin. So be careful. Well, we, we do go back 23 years. Um, and we did innovate and create, um, along with other, our other team members at Enable, the first, as you said, RMM platform for MSPs to remotely monitor and manage devices and to move from chaotic to reactive to proactive to manage services. And um, that was that that was a journey. And so and Derek and I are doing the, the same journey again. And this time it's for SaaS security and SaaS management. Um, and 
Uh, so, so we have tested each other. And what I would say, and not only that, Derek and I have actually done a ton of serious offshore sailing, including a transatlantic sail. Wow. On my boat. <laughs> so we have spent many, many hours together in small spaces alone with <laughs> boardrooms, sailboats in the middle of the ocean, in hurricanes. Uh, so I, I'd say Derek and I augment each other. No pun intended on the argument, but we we have uh, we have a, a strengths and passions, and we love to innovate and disrupt industries. and And at the at the end of the day, this is about looking for opportunities to help MSPs grow their business, increase their profitabilities, and expand their services. And you know, in this particular case, the channel is behind the end customers. The end customers with the onset of COVID in particular adopted cloud services in an incredibly meaningful way. Um, and, uh, and so the end customers are there and now the channel is catching up to the customers in that how now you've got all this stuff, you didn't implement tools to secure and manage it. How can we help you in those areas? So just, uh, so, so, you know, Derek and I spend a lot of time together um, I, I like to disrupt and I like to cause a whole bunch of chaos and Derek likes to, he's, uh, he's the master train conductor. He, he has the trains operating on time, on schedule and everything. And, uh, and, and we work incredibly well together. I, I, it's clear for anybody listening to this as well, the connection that you guys have got, the friendship and, you know, how you work together. I was reading, rereading a book this morning. You're, you're probably familiar with it, the book Rocket Fuel uh, by yes. Gene Whitman and things. And, you know, the idea of the visionary and the integrator. I, I've got a wonderful lady within my business, uh, Michelle, who is the integrator to my visionary. And like you, Gavin, I run around causing chaos and I like I like to call it positive disruption, but sometimes Michelle would disagree. <laughs> Derek, would you would you say you've got a similar relationship there? Or uh, we do. I mean, it's you know I met Gavin, you know, as he said about twenty three years ago. Um, you know, he was talking to me about about uh, starting Enable and and his vision for it. And and you know, for anybody that's met Gavin and anybody listening to this, it, it's incredibly incredibly charismatic and and has this this sense of like. You just it's infectious when he starts talking about what he wants to build. And, and you know, I was I was struck by it minute one. I was like, you know, whatever happens, I got to work with this guy because, <laughs> you know, that is like a rocket ship. And, and uh, and you know, and I remember over the years we we, you know, had a great working relationship that developed into a, a real friendship uh, through sailing and things like that. But it is it is very much of a, a yin and yang relationship. You know, Gavin is always pushing, always, you know, always asking, you know, do we really need to do that or why can't we do it? And I'm always the one like in my mind, I'm like, okay, so if this happens and then that goes like this and then this goes, <laughs> I think we can do it. But he pulls and pushes and drags us through and uh and you know. I'll tell you, I'll I'll do anything. I'll go as far as as we can together. I just absolutely love working with him. And and every every time I think I've got it nailed down, and I feel like I'm pushing hard, it's like it goes twice as fast in the other direction. I love it. So, yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I would say this, Derek. It takes a very special type of individual to be that integrator there and and to get stuff done there. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, I'll I, run, a, I'll I'll run a, a session with, uh, with your lady. We can, we can talk about it together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll introduce you to Michelle after this one. Absolutely. So. Me and Michelle will run a therapy <laughs> session. <again. laughs> therapy session. Yeah. Therapy session. Yeah. Hey, hey Gavin, I've got to ask, you know, you were a pioneer of managed services way back in 2000. I want to put that in context for listeners who are, per, you know, perhaps familiar with my work and uh, uh, perhaps knock, knock, uh, not uh, uh, come across enable and things before. I started in the managed service industry in 2004. So you predated that by, you know, like four years. You really were one of the architects of this. I guess my question would be, what would you say is the biggest change for, for managed services that you've seen in the last 20 plus years? The biggest change, of course, there's going to be many, but what would the biggest change be? So that was the first big change. It was... You know, and the whole catalyst for Enable was um, I was at a cocktail party in 99 and I was talking to this VAR that did $10 million a year in sales. And I said, you know, I just finished a venture uh, and I was looking for my next investment venture. And, and I said to this fellow, Larry, 
what could you do that would dramatically affect your business from a productivity and profitability uh, next year? Like if the world was your oyster, what would you do? And it was that idea of, you know, I'd have to roll a truck, find out what the problem is, get, get, roll the truck back to get the, whatever the fix was, roll the truck back to fix it. And, you know, wow, that, 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 if I could only remotely monitor my clients' environments. So, so, you know, you know, that was, that was the idea for managed services is, uh, is, how do you do that? So that was the first thing. And we started in 2000. It didn't really start catching hold till about when you got in 2003, 2004. And then it took about seven years till about 2010 or 11 before it became kind of mainstream, where everybody was doing a bit of managed services and they were trying to pull their customers from time and material to fixed fee managed services. So it was a process and it and, and a big process, but it was it took that time. We're going through the same catalyst again right now, where again, as we mentioned a moment ago, customers have like the, the network, while still important, there's not a lot of data back there. It's in the cloud now. And since COVID, everybody's like SaaS applications have grown by 700 percent. And the corporate data by, by 2025, 85% of the applications and data will all be in the cloud. And today people are spending more on, on software than they are on hardware. And software is growing by 25% per year and device sales are basically flat. So you can see where that IT spend is going. So the, the, the channel is being pulled into this notion that great, I manage and secure the network. Now I also have to do that for cloud services. And so this, that expansion of their traditional managed and security service model to include cloud services is the next big catalyst. And so if we look at five years from now, you know, it'll start with Microsoft management, right? We're, that's what we're working hard on today is help the channel manage and secure Microsoft and the SaaS applications at large. Then it will become around, okay, I help you um, set up uh, from an administration, security policies and posture and all that kind of stuff, uh, Microsoft. And now I'm going to add another application and it might be Salesforce. And then it might be your financial application. And then it might be Adobe, it might be Adobe, whatever it is, whatever the core applications are that you're probably backing up. Also, you'll be administrating and securing as well. So my view is that's where the channel is going. And this is the first baby step in managed and security cloud services. Uh, so this is, I, I think, the next big pivot in the channel. The first one was to go to managed services, and now it's adding managed cloud security services. Yeah. Derek, if I was asked you to, to cast your mind back, and, it, and it's totally okay if you maybe can't talk about this, but are you able to talk about the process of SolarWinds acquiring Enable, what it was like at the time? Yeah, it's, you know, at a very high level, I had a great time. It was it was a great experience. They were incredibly supportive. They they saw a real, you know, real need for a product like, like Enable, and, and they really wanted to invest in the channel, and they did it in a big way. And I would say that the entire experience from start to finish was was fantastic. Uh, you know, the best way I can describe it is it was a it was a, a very intense, passionate love affair. We kind of met each other's gaze across a crowded room. We started dancing and a few short months later, big wedding and a honeymoon. And then we basically got back home and then we started doing chores and doing laundry and then doing the dishes. So <laughs> it was everything in between. You know, they are they were an organization that that spent a lot of money for Enable. They had very high expectation. They wanted the team to stick together and, and myself and guys like Mike Cullen and Frank Coletti. And we all really just doubled down on it. And, and they really made it easy for us to succeed. And, and they saw the channel not just as a, a great way to acquire revenue and, and you know, and, and really drive profitability, but they saw it a way of, to really make an impact. And, and you can see it today in that Enable still lives on. It still has the name Enable on the building. The core team is still there. And, and to be honest, the only reason that 
that I, I felt that I wanted to move on is that I had such a passion for this technology yeah. set. And, and Gavin and I just kept talking and talking and it was like, you know, let's do it again. And, and otherwise I'd still be there. And, and, you know, the guys that are there, like I talk to Mike Cullen and, and Frank Coletti all the time and they still love it. It is still a great place to work. So I would say it's for me anyways, it was like a model acquisition. I have nothing bad to say. It was great. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Gavin, I'm really intrigued. How did it feel for you when the ink was dry on the SolarWinds deal? What was it like as, uh, as an entrepreneur and from a personal level? Well, it, it was, um, you know, it was exciting for sure. Uh, it was it was a good transaction. We, um, you know, from hello to close was 45 days. So wow. th- this was um, not a simple transaction, Uh because of all the products and technologies we had and and team members, uh, but it, we we were incredibly organized as a business and organization. And um, as, as Derek and I are today, we were crazy metrics driven and measured everything. So the process was was really really good and smooth um, and you know bittersweet. It, it's it it was my baby. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but I, we, we had built such a strong management team that I was able to to hand the business over to SolarWinds and I departed. Uh, I retired and actually went on and did uh, business with our eldest daughter, uh, which was great, great fun. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the business lives on today. So, I, you know, it, it was uh, it was a proud moment to have built the company to that level and to have passed it on uh, and the management team that can continue to run the company and build it into something great. Oh, that, that is wonderful to hear. Derek, I'm intrigued as well. What would you say, looking back over your time in managed services, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned from uh, being in the managed service industry? Uh, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. but, right, let's narrow it you know, down to one, perhaps. <laughs> absolutely. I, I get asked a lot by by either entrepreneurs that are looking to build products for the MSP space or, or enterprise right. companies looking to make the jump. And, and I tell them all the same thing is that MSPs don't need more products. Like at the end of the day, right. they have lots of product. They are small business owners with, with an incredibly difficult task ahead of them because they're not a 50, 60, 70 person organization. A lot of them are five, six, seven people managing a hundred customers. They have a big job. And, and the last thing they want is to bring on a new product and train their techs and change the way they do business. The, the product needs to be, you know, the, 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 the how you're going to accomplish, but the what is either helping them save money or helping them make money. That's the only thing that matters. Your product should just be, you know, the enabler to that. If if you approach an MSP with a product and, and you cannot articulate why they need this or, or how this is going to help and understand that probably another product might have to leave the stack to fit yours in, it is incredibly important that as a business that, that is looking to engage with MSPs that you're always thinking about what's it going to save, what's it going to make. The product needs to be just the how you're going to accomplish that. So to me, you know, everything that we built here, here at Augment, we started off by thinking, okay, we need to start to invest in the very, very beginning in our partner success and our go-to-market programs. And I would say we spend as much time and as many resources in building out the programs of how you're going to implement this and how do we make it easier and simpler for you to see the savings or make extra money as we do in building products. And it's got to be the same. The minute you lose focus to that and, and you start to believe that all you're doing is selling products to MSPs, you're in a losing battle because honestly, MSPs don't need more products. I am always amazed at how many products they use to build their service offering. So that's the biggest lesson I've learned is, is if it doesn't need to be a product and it could be something else, if there's a way for us to make our go-to-market better and easier, that is what we need to focus on. They don't need more widgets. They don't need anything else. So amazing amazing feedback that right there is a, a value bomb for our listeners so uh <laughs> and, and i would say for the managed service industry as a whole for i know we've got vendors we've got msps we've got journalists listening to the show so thank you for for sharing that really valuable there gavin final question i guess on 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 your you know history in the industry looking back is there anything that you are looking to do or have done differently with augments that you learned from your time with enable so I, i'm not being negative with that question but is there anything that you would do you have done or would do differently with augment 
Well, I'll, I'll say <clears throat> what took us maybe years to learn at Enable, um, we've implemented right away at Augment. So two of the main um, areas, or three actually, one, we before we even started building product or designing product, we got a technology and business advisory board of, of MSPs on board. Brilliant. So we didn't want to build what we thought was great stuff. We wanted to get really smart people, MSPs and MMSPs, um, as part of our advisory group and help us build and design great products for the industry. So that, that was one thing we did you know, before we even started designing products. The, the second one was understanding how do we remove the barriers for the channel and make it super easy for the channel. So the product had to be crazy ease of use. Um, and then we, we also needed to have a freemium model so that we removed the initial pricing barrier for the MSP. So here's a hundred licenses, knock yourself out. They're full commercial licenses, use them to make money, et cetera. And then the third component is what we call Augment Academy. Um, and at Enable, we did Enable University, but it is all the go-to-market program. So here's how you market it. Here's how you sell it. Here's your pricing. Here's your slick. Here's your web content. Here's your webinar. Uh, content and templates, et cetera, et cetera. So the, as Derek was just talking about that whole enablement. So yeah. those three areas were, um, and that really rolls into how do we make our partners successful? And if we make our partners successful, then we will be successful. And 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 that is our, our mantra as an organization. It's not how do we make money off you? It's how do we help you make money and save money? And we'll all be successful together because if I'm if we're helping you do that, then you're going to come back and you're going to want to do business with us more and more. That right there is absolute gold, Gavin. And again, you know, Derek just gave value bombs for 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 anybody listening, including vendors. What you've just said, I think, should be the playbook for any vendor within the managed service market because you can have the best technology in the world, but if the MSPs don't know how to sell it to their clients, it's just going to go nowhere. So I'm I'm in awe of what, what you've done with the Augment Academy on that because I think it's a, a just a marvellous step. Well, that's again, Derek and team. I, I, I just <laughs> throw stuff out and we discuss and, <laughs> and Derek makes it better and bigger and smarter. And the team does. I just take credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, again, it's clear to anybody listening to this, the, you know, the bond that you two have as friends, as as uh, as uh, co-founders of entrepreneurs together. This has been just an incredible pleasure. I, you know, I was saying to the team at the start of this week during our team meeting, they asked me, what are you looking forward to? And I said, I'm looking forward to speaking to Gavin and Derek, because genuinely I've known your name for a long time. We've never had an opportunity to connect. So this has been phenomenal. So as we come to the end of our time, I guess, final question, and maybe I'll turn to you, Derek, in the first instance, what's next for Augmen? What can we expect over the next 18 months? Yeah, so the next 18 months for us, uh, you know, a continued focus on 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 our products, specifically on the secure module. Uh, we have a, a you know a list of, of requirements that we've gathered from those thousand partners that we that we work with of, of everything they want to see. So very very aggressive product roadmap and continuing to 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 help build out the platform and make it more meaningful from a security around SaaS and Microsoft. So that's number one. We're investing heavily around the go to market. So we've we've got a, a whole new uh, set of, of programs that are going out really around uh, this, the, the specifics around how to make money with MFA and, and how to make you know project money and how to make reoccurring money and how to do it with SaaS discovery and so on. So a lot of, of, of uh, program work. Um, and we're a little blessed because we have so many people using the program and, and MSPs love to share what they're doing. So we're able to, to really create a, a, a real summarized, you know, Cole's notes version of, of these programs. And, and their goal is always to make them easier and easier and quicker to implement. Um, and I'd say the last piece is, is, is really, um, you know, for us, you know, Eng uh, English speaking Europe really being in that territory in a very meaningful way and supporting local partners. You know, we were talking, you know, off camera before about how important it is to have that local presence and, and to be not just, a, a, you know, a U.S. or Canadian vendor supporting abroad, but really be 
you know, very vested and, and being very close to our partners. Um, so that's also something you're going to see over the next 18 months is, is us truly making that 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 investment and, and being, you know, a, a, a real partner, hand in hand partner with our European and, and, uh, and um, global partners. So that's most likely where you're going to see over the next 18 months, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Exciting times ahead. Uh, Gavin, okay. I'll put you on the spot. Uh, uh, us at this side of the pond, might we see you and Derek across here anytime in the near future? Oh, uh, absolutely. I, I was, I, I think I was in uh, Europe twice last year for um, uh, uh, events with partners, and uh, I, I, you you give me an excuse and uh, I'll be there. <laughs> We're going to have to make that happen. We're going to have to make that happen because I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of people listening to this. Uh, many who have been in the industry as long as me are aware of your work. Many others who are perhaps newer to the industry wouldn't be aware of your work, but you will have now made big fans of. So thank you both so much for your time today. Hey, Derek, just before we go, I guess I should ask if, if anybody listening to this wants to reach out, find out more about Augment, uh, continue the conversation with you and uh, Gavin, what's the best way for them to get started? Yeah, the easiest way, you know, go to our website, augmentwith2ts.com. And uh, I would say if you're interested in, in learning more, trying it out, you know, sign up for, as Gavin pointed out, that freemium program. It's 100 free licenses. It's good forever. Use them on customers, monetize it. That is, you know, the easiest way to interact with us and, and see what we're all about. Um, I, I know I seem like a pretty unapproachable person, but I love talking to people one on one. So I would say just reach out to me on LinkedIn or just email me. It's my first name dot last name at augment.com. My email's on the website. Same goes for Gavin. We're an open book. I love talking to MSP. So please reach out to me personally. I'd love to engage with you guys. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Uh, hey, Richard, same for me. I'm, I mean, I, I'm connected with almost 8,000 MSPs on LinkedIn, and I welcome chats, communications, anytime, all the time. Fantastic. And we will include in the show notes for this episode everything that Gavin and Derek have talked about, their email addresses, the NFR license links, and we've actually got a landing page with the video demo for Augment On and everything else there. So please go to tublog.co.uk and you'll find all the details there. Gavin, Derek, you've made my week with this conversation. This has been so much fun to speak to you both. Hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for your time. Richard, Thanks. it's absolutely our pleasure. And, and, you know, we really appreciate you having us on because uh, it's it's great to chat. You're a legend in the industry. So <laughs> this, is a, this is a great yeah. opportunity for us. And, and it's been wonderful to chat with you. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey folks, Richard here. Thanks for listening today. I know you've got a ton of options for who you listen to nowadays, so I really appreciate your support. Do you have any feedback on this episode? Ideas for future guests? Tweet me at Tubblog using the hashtag TubTalk. I respond to every tweet and really appreciate your feedback. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's gogo.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.